G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to one of the Guitars Already Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play the Zephyr song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now if you wanna master chords back to the front, then be sure to head over to guitarsalreadyhero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you really wanna improve any guitar, then sign up to Guitars Already Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. For the basics of this song, we'll just need your guitar and standard tuning. Let's jump into the lesson. So in terms of tone, I'm using a Fender Strat here with the bridge pickup. I'm playing on a clean channel and everything's recorded using the Boss Katana Air. On top of the clean channel, I'm just using a lot of reverb and I've cranked the gain up fairly high on the clean channel as well. So let's get stuck into the intro and we're going to start up here on the 12th fret with our ring and pinky finger on the 5th and 3rd string and your index will just be on the 10th fret of the 4th string. Now we'll pluck from the 5th to the 3rd string and just let each note ring out. So nice and easy like that. Then we'll slide our ring and pinky finger down 2 frets and now our middle finger will go on the 4th string but this time on the ninth fret. We're going to do the same. Then we're going to go down here to the 7th, 5th and 4th frets of the 5th, 4th and 3rd strings. This is a minor triad shape, so you got the root, minor, third, and fifth. Now, most people will play it like this, because it's more comfortable, but John Frushanti actually plays it like this, because he's actually got quite big fingers. So I'm going to do this for the rest of the lesson, play these triad shapes with these three fingers. But you can do it this way too, if you want to. And then we go up to an F shape. So Slide everything up one fret, except instead of your middle finger, we're now using your ring finger here. So it's gotta be one fret behind the root note here on the fourth string. And this is a major triad shape. So because the bass note here is an F, that's an F major triad. But if I was to use this shape, that would be an F minor triad. So just a little bit of theory there for you. A lot of this song is based off triads. So that's the first four bars. Now for the second half of this intro, we're now going back up to here to the 12th fret and we're going to play an A minor triad. So remember, for the minor triads, your second note will be one string down and two frets back from the root note here. So that's our A minor triad there. And then we're gonna go down to a G triad. So it's gonna look like this. Now this is a major triad. So your ring finger will be one fret behind the root note. And then the E minor is the same. And then with the F, we're actually gonna hit these two notes for the last pluck. So it needs to be fretted like this. So in total for the intro. Next we get to verse part one. Now there's two lines of tab here and we're going to base a lot of this around our triad shapes that we've just learned. So we're going to start with this A minor triad again. We're going to pluck fifth, fourth, third and back to fifth string. And then we have three notes which are descending from the 12th fret of the third string, 10th and 9th. So like that. Then we'll go to our G major triad. We'll pluck the same pattern for the first four notes. So fifth, fourth, Then we're going to descend on the third string again from 10th, 9th, and then 7th. So that bar in total. Then we go down to our E minor triad like this. We're going to do the same picking pattern for the first four plucks. And then descend down from the 7th fret, 5th, and 4th of the third string. Then we're going to go up to our F major triad like this, and you'll pluck the fifth, fourth, third, and then we'll have 
a quick lick here. So 7th fret, slide up to 9th, down to 7th, and back to 5th. So the final bar. And in total for the first line of tab. For the second line of tab, we'll start with this A minor again. First four plucks are the same. But then we'll go to 12th fret of the third, 10th fret of the second string, and back to the 9th fret of the third. So. The G is the same as the first line of tab. For the E minor, we'll change things a little bit here, so we'll pluck the same first four notes, but then we'll go up to the seventh fret of the third, fifth fret of the second, and fifth fret of the third. So, so in total. And then to end this, we're going to go to our F note, which is the eighth fret of the fifth string, and then fourth fret of the third, and fifth fret of the third. So that will sound like this. And then we end back on our F note. So. And the second line in total. Total for part one of the verse. Part two of the verse is very similar to what we just learnt. There's just two variations here. Now the first variation is the third bar and the second line of tab. For the E minor, we're not doing this. We're just playing the regular descending lick. And then the final variation is the fact that at the end we don't go back to the F note in this lick. We'll just end it there. So part two of the verse sounds like this. That's it for the verse. Next we get to the first chorus, which is really easy. We're going to start with a D chord. Now you can play an open D, but the D bar chord is more true to the song than the way John Frushanti likes to play guitar. He never really uses too many open chords. So we have the D bar chord like this, and then we're going to a G add nine. So the way to play that, your thumb will reach over and hit the third fret of the sixth string. Ring finger will be on the fifth fret of the fourth, middle on the fourth fret of the third, index finger on the third fret of the second, and then your pinky finger will go on to the fifth fret of the first. And you want to have the fifth string muted when you strum all this. And that's our G add nine. Then we're going to go to an A6, so shift everything up two frets, and then swap the position of your pinky and ring finger. They just change strings. So originally they were like this for the G add nine. Now your pinky comes up to the second string and your index comes up to the first string. So that's our A6. Now the D is held out for two bars, the G for one bar and the A for one bar. So the chorus just sounds like this. One, two, 
and that's just played through twice for the first chorus. Now the break after the first chorus is identical to the first liner tab for verse part two. So nothing new to learn there. And then the second verse is just the same as verse part two. So again, nothing new to learn. We then get to the chorus, which is the same as the first chorus. And then there's a post chorus after the second chorus, which is very similar to the chorus. So we stay on the D and now we're gonna start strumming. So we're just strumming at eighth notes. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then we go to our G add nine, strum that for one bar. This is where things change. We're going to go to an A bar chord. So it's the same as an A bar chord, but John Frushanti plays it with his thumb. So strum this twice. Go down to a G. Back to the A. So one, two, three, And that's it for the first line of tab for this post chorus. The second line of tab is almost identical, except we just go to an A and hold that out for our final bar. So post-chorus sounds like this. And then we get to our solo section. The solo is really easy, there's two lines of tab. In the playthrough at the end, I just add a little bit of boost overdrive to just make the lead cut through a little more, but you can play it with the same clean tone if you wanted to. So we're gonna start the 12th fret of the first string, pluck that, down to 10th fret, back up to 12th fret twice. So four plucks. And then we end the bar with one more pluck. So. And then for our second bar, we go 10th fret, back up to 12th, up to 12th on the second string, and we do a half bend. That's a bend in a release. Don't bend up too high, it just needs to go up to that pitch, the 13th fret, and then down to 10th fret. Like that. Then for the third bar, we basically play the exact same thing we did in the first bar, just down two frets, so. Then the fourth bar is identical to the second bar. For the second line of tab, the first two bars are identical to the first line of tab. For the third bar, we add an extra note here where we go 10, 8, 10, 10. We go 10, 8. So that's the third bar there. And then for the final bar, we go 10th fret. 12th fret, 12th fret of the 2nd string, do that bend, and then 10th fret and 9th fret of the 3rd string. And the solo in total. Then we have the section after the solo and we're just strumming chords here, but they're very specific sounding chords. So we have an A minor like this. So you're gonna play it with your thumb, hitting the fifth fret of the sixth string and then, then ring on the seventh and then your index firing across the rest and keep that fifth string muted. But we're gonna turn this into an A minor add nine by putting our pinky finger on the seventh fret there. Now, that's our first chord. Our second chord is a G add nine, so Move everything down two frets, but your middle finger will now come onto the third fret there. Like that. Then we have an E minor, so slide your pinky down to the third fret and play an E minor like that. And then we have an F add nine, which is the same shape as the G add nine, but just down here. Now our strumming pattern's gonna be down, down, You're going to play that once for each chord, which sounds like this. And 
and that's it for the post solo section. Then we get to the outro, which is the final guitar part we need to learn for this song. Now I'm gonna start with the D chord shape up here. So it's the same as a D like this, but 12 frets up. We're just going to pluck third, second and first string. And you're going to do that five times. Then we'll go up to a G chord shape. So you just need to bar your index finger across the 15th fret and middle finger comes under the 16th fret, the third string. You're going to go third, second and first string twice. And then third and second to end the bar. And then we do the exact same thing, two frets up. So the first line of tab. Now the second line of tab is almost identical, except for this D shape. The third time we play it, you'll put your pinky down onto the 15th fret. And then after that, you'll just lift it. So only on the third time. And then the rest is the same. So the second line of tab in total. Finally, the third line of tab is almost identical, except we're going to change the final bar. So instead of going up to this shape, which is the A, you're gonna bar your index finger across the 14th fret and pinky goes on the 17th fret of the first string. You strum that, and then go 16th and 15th fret of the third, second string. Move that up two frets, and then we end the song on the D. So the final line of tab, And those are all the guitar parts you need to learn for this song. So now I'll be playing through the song in its entirety and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to practice, play along to and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to head over to guitarzerohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve on your guitar, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step by step guitar course. Again, it would mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, or requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.